What do you guys want to talk about? <laughs> I do lots of stuff. Yeah, boy. Uh, everybody's excited about the challenge and the opportunity. You know, we're going to get a chance to play against uh, the gold standard uh, in college football for sure. Uh, over the last uh, few decades, uh, that uh, I, I've really been in the heart of my career. Uh, it's always been uh, Alabama um, and really everybody else. And uh, so it's a great opportunity. We know the challenge um, that uh, we're going to face, but uh, you know. I, it's, the CFP's got the top four. I, I argue that this might be the best um, game or matchup uh, outside of the of the CFP. So I know it's going to be a great challenge, but uh, our guys are excited about it. What's the? Can you update us just on what the schedule has been like in the last week or two and where it's going from here? Yeah, well, we finally get to practice with some consecutive days now because we've been on the road the last couple weeks, and so we just come back on the weekends. Uh, and practice on Saturday and Sunday and then head out again. Uh, Coach True's been with them a little bit, uh, doing some strength and conditioning. We've had finals. We've had a lot of things. We were able to practice on Saturday uh, with a lot of developmental stuff. And then yesterday, we got a little bit more into, into prep work. We'll practice again uh, today, tomorrow, and Wednesday before we give them a little break, before we reconvene. Not every day that you win a Big 12 championship. How quickly were you able to? Put your feet back on the ground. Um, unfortunately, too quickly. You know, I haven't really had a chance to enjoy it. Uh, it uh, we go right on the road. You know, from from that, I was in Vegas with uh, Adrian for the Campbell Award, and then from there, just hit hit on the road. So it it has not hit hit me. I can't wait till it does. Uh, but it might be February before it does because we go right from. Uh, playing in the Sugar Bowl to back on the road or with recruiting cycles and stuff. So uh, I, I'm thrilled for our players and for our staff that uh, um, we were able to do this in, you know, in the four years' time that we have been here. Uh, I know it's been a, very, very hard. It's been very rewarding. Uh, the, yeah, I keep telling these guys and telling people the, the power of belief and belief in those players and the power of player ownership. Uh, and it's taken uh, three or four years to get to that point, but um, now we just have to find a way to sustain it. And that's, um, I think, sometimes harder than building it, but it makes it more fun and challenging. Switching gears really quickly, Eli Huggins is a guy, a six-year guy, came back to this team. What does that mean to you for him to be able to do that, and what has he meant to this team this season? Well, Eli's everything. He's a captain. He's one of our, our true leaders on defense. For him to, uh, you know, make the plays on the goal line stops uh, in that big game, and you know, Eli and I have had some conversations. He came back for a reason, and that's not just to um, compete for a, a six year. It was to win a championship, and you know. Eli's a pretty humble guy. He's not going to be publicly sta stating this is why only reason I came back to win a championship. But deep down, uh, I know that that was one of the reasons that he really felt like we had the opportunity. And it was critical for us that he did come back because he's been such a huge part of this to, to get us where we're at. I sure hope so. Um, I think there's some validation that what we're doing here collectively with players, staff, support staff is the right way and the right thing. Uh, I don't know if everybody uh, outside of this place believed that that was the case all the time, uh, but uh, gave us some validation with uh, our own staff, or myself, our own people in the building, as well as when we go out to, uh, to schools and to see players that um, – you know what, you can go to Kansas State and be a champion. Um, something that uh, uh, I always say we have been talking about since the day I was in here in 2019 and Gene introduced me to the football team that um, um, if, if you believe and you take ownership, you can, uh, you can become a champion. And um, uh, I, I firmly believe that. That was not just me talking to try to get kids motivated. I, I firmly believe that that, that could happen. Um, did it happen? 
sooner or later than I thought, you know what? That's life. I don't know. You know, did we did we not have the 2020 campaign with the COVID? Who knows? Could have happened sooner. Uh, to the fact that we had the amount of injuries we had this year. Uh, we played two quarterbacks, both really successful. Uh, I just think our kids always believed that they had this opportunity, and it wasn't easy, but they got it done. Just before we can check it on or off the, the list, have you had any players say that they don't want to play in this game in the form of opt-outs? No, uh, and I don't see that happening. Uh, I think everybody that uh, will be eligible to play will play. Um, uh, I, I did see that Alabama had the same thing, which I'm excited for uh, the fan base uh, of both teams and the fans in general that uh, uh, the best the best players want to play and play with their with their teammates and stuff. And and uh, one last time, I think that's uh, that's a good sign for college football in general when uh, um, you have a, a game of this magnitude with two really good teams, two really good programs. So much respect for Coach Saban and what he's done, not at Alabama but what he's done for college football in general uh, that uh, everybody's playing in this game. Bryce Young and Will Anderson, they're two you know, big guys playing. Who's the harder matchup there when you look at it? Uh, I think it's probably equal. <laughs> I mean, because they, they do so much for their football team on each side of the ball. Um, and, and, you know, they're, they're people you have to obviously have to prepare for. Uh, luckily, it's one on one side and one on the other side. But make no mistake, they've got a lot of other really, really talented good players on both sides. I know you've uh, kind of split bowl prep in the past, you know, some developmental, some prep for the game. When it's Alabama on the other side, do you shift more? Yeah, that's a good other? question, Kelsey. I don't think you can. I, I, I don't want to. I still want to keep focus on the development uh, of some of these younger players, and they deserve that opportunity. Those young offensive linemen deserve not to just go down to scout team, but to be coached by Coach Riley and do our system and to play against some of the younger guys on defense. And so, you know, last weekend when we uh, were in the middle of recruiting and we just had a couple practices, that was the lion's share of the reps was in, was in developmental offense, defense, and special teams. Uh, yesterday was uh, a good chunk of uh, developmental as well. We flip it a little bit more today in the next few days, but <clears throat> without question, um, we have to give those the give those kids the time because we need to still evaluate those guys uh, as we're moving forward into the spring of 2023. Uh, one more for you. You've mentioned those few times that um, you know you guys really turned a corner after 2020, especially in the locker room. Yeah. Looking back, um, I know that year was very stressful, but is it kind of a weird blessing in disguise that it happened and it made you reevaluate? You know, some things? It probably um, you had to reevaluate because of of just how you were going to teach, how the learning environments and stuff changed. But, uh, um, you know, I think everything happens for a reason. I, I really do. Um, I, I knew when I came down here this was to follow Coach Snyder was not going to be uh, an easy task because of everything that Bill has meant to, to Kansas State and to college football. And it was the greatest turnaround in college football history and all those things that I, you know, you'd hear all the time that uh, – um, you know, I, I think you you have to go through some of those rough patches. And it's made me better as a leader. It's made me better um, as a mentor. It's made me better as a football coach. It's made me age a lot more in the last few years as well. Uh, but uh, it probably makes it more rewarding that we've had to go through the things that we did to uh, be on that stage in, in early December thinking, holy cow, uh, how, we, we got this done. Is the... No, we've never done that. Uh, I don't think probably Coach would be doing that. But uh, I've talked to him. I've met him. Uh, but I've talked to him over the phone a few times. Is the lack of con continuity that you've experienced kind of between practices become such a regular that you've got some consistency from it right now? Um, well, we hope to get some consistency moving forward this week because – you don't get consistency when you practice two days and you're off five days. The ball's on the ground more on offense. You don't maybe fit things right on defense or, you know, you're out of out of alignment and stuff. We need to practice now. We need to go consecutive days to get back into that football realm. And I know we're going to give them a little bit of a break around Christmas, which the, which the guys need, the coaches need, the support staff needs. But then we're fortunate we get a normal preparation. We'll arrive in New Orleans on uh, on Monday and, and start practice, and we'll have a normal Monday through Friday. 
Yeah, um, he would be the one that would probably be of uh, the ones that aren't season ending uh, would be the one that I'm probably concerned about the most. He hasn't uh, uh, practiced at all yet. Uh, I don't see him practicing uh, before we leave for New Orleans. And so, you know, that gives him, you know, a week from, uh, is today Monday? Yeah, a week from today. A week from today is when we get down to New Orleans, and that will be a better tell. And I, he still says he's playing, which I love. He said, Coach, I'm playing, but he's got to continue to do some rehab, uh, and we'll see how it is next Monday. Is there a, a comparable Big 12 comparison to number seven, Ja'Cory Brooks? Uh, boy, I haven't even thought about it. I think everybody's excited about it, uh, but in the same respect, it's going to come down to our preparation. And we talked about that yesterday after practice that uh, we've really got to dominate the details of our game plan because I think Alabama does as good a job as anybody of attacking your weaknesses and attacking, um, you know, whether it's a personnel or a scheme, what you do poorly. They do a great job of of exposing that. So we have to do a great job of of dominating the details and, and doing a great job with execution and just knowing our game plan. But I know that our all of our guys, no matter where you're from, uh, are, are really excited about uh, the opportunity for starters to play in the Sugar Bowl, to be in a New Year's Six game. Uh, and I know the fan base is excited about going down to New Orleans. And then uh, we'll see what happens on the 31st. Coach, I think there was 23 FBS head coaching changes this year. Can you explain if you're expecting any transition on your staff from coaching full-time to GAs, whatever it may be? I have no idea. Uh, th they will come to me. We've got a great understanding our coaching staff does. If they have an opportunity that I can help them with, I want to help them. Uh, if they get an opportunity to be a head coach or a coordinator and they're not one of those right now, um, you know, I'm in this profession uh, because of what people did for me, and I would do the same for them. Uh, but, uh, you know, right now, all of us are together. Um, I don't know if there'll be any movement. I hope there's not because we've got a great staff. But uh, um, I think everybody will be set through through New Orleans for sure. Can you explain the importance of being able to keep staff continuity and how important that is to having a successful program? Yeah, it's, it's critical to have the same voice, the same messaging, all that stuff. But you say that in one, one breath, it uh, doesn't mean I don't want somebody to get a great opportunity if they can further their career. Uh, I was able to move along and further my career, uh, and those decisions aren't easy because you're not just affecting yourself. You're affecting your wife, your children, family. Um, you know, but uh, uh, you know, I know that guys are focused on this game, too. I know our coaching staff is 100% locked in uh, on preparing our guys uh, to go battle a great Alabama team. Coach, I assume Adrian will be healthy or close to it for this game. How do you balance the use of the quarterbacks? Yeah, um, he practiced yesterday, which was good, and, and it was a, a, a normal practice. He took reps. Uh, will took reps with the ones, and then he and Jake took reps with the twos, and we eased him into it yesterday. We'll probably give him a few more reps. Um, I think he came out of it uh, okay yesterday. Uh, so we'll probably give him a few more reps these next three days. Uh, and, and push him a little bit more because um, I'd love to see him play. You know, Will's going to start. Will's the guy uh, in, in the bowl game. Um, but I'd love to have uh, Adrian get an opportunity to play in this bowl game. And if he's healthy, um, that's the plan is trying to get him some snaps in there. But I want to make sure that, that he's healthy first, and, and we need to probably get through these next three days, and, and then he's going to get a few days off uh, before we reconvene in New Orleans. When you watch film of Alabama, what's a couple of things that jump out at you like, oh, boy, we don't see this in the Big 12 or this is going to be really elite stuff? Well, yeah, I know it's going to shock you when I tell you this, but to me, football is football. <laughs> and you've heard me say that before. Um, they're really good up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage. Other teams in our league are really good up front as well. But they're, um, they've, in my mind, I know they have Heisman Trophy winners and Bryce Young, and, and they have really good skill kids all over the place. But when you, when you watch them over the last decade that I've watched them, their front seven has always been very disruptive, and it's no different this year. And their offensive line 
has always owned the line of scrimmage, and that's that's kind of where I look at Alabama and say they went up front on both sides of the line of scrimmage, and I know they have skilled kids all over the place. Hard hitting question: Are you in the new indoor, and what do you think? Yeah, we are in the new indoor. Um, we haven't opened up the garage doors, and I don't think we'll do that today to get to the other part of that. Plus, it's not quite finished yet. Uh, it's a lot brighter than the uh, uh, the old indoor. Um, the surface is different. It's taken us a little bit to get used to that. It's going to take us a little bit. The grass or the turf's a little bit higher, a little bit longer. Um, but uh, it's refreshing to be in there. I know the guys are excited about having a – uh, a new environment and you can actually coach and talk in there without the lights being too too loud when i say the lights being too loud or the furnace being on or something it's just it's really neat to be in there i uh, can't thank enough to uh the ryan brothers and in, in uh, kc and the shamrock corporation for getting that done and helping us with that um because it uh it's a game changer for us Um, I, I don't know. I don't think it's ever been brought up with our guys. I, I really don't. I mean, that was last year, last year's team. Um, this is a different team. We are different. Obviously, Alabama is going to be way different. Um, you know, I, it doesn't get brought up in any conversations we have with the guys. I know your your focus is on, on the game ahead, but because of signing day falling right in the middle of this, do you talk to any players at all about, especially the ones that have a chance – Maybe to come back for an extra year, or and how does how do you work around that, or do you have to wait till the late signing period to address? No, we've we've talked to everybody uh, on the team about uh, where their plans are, and there are a, a handful that are unsure, uh, that are pretty impactful. That I'm going to let enjoy this game, and then we'll uh, continue those conversations. But we have a pretty good gauge of what's going on with the roster. Uh, the NCAA announced on Friday that the bowl game wasn't going to affect the, the four-game red shirt. Is that something that you guys are going to be taking advantage of? And what do you think about that? In general? Um, I wish I would have announced it on November 5th. I mean, that was the, the, the simple answer is kids that we didn't play against Baylor and we were beat to heck. The kids we didn't play against West Virginia and we were beat to heck or didn't play against KU and we were beat to heck to try to save that game for the bowl game was was all along the the goal and so uh, a good number of kids lost out on an opportunity to play another game and that's unfortunate um so uh saying that all the kids that probably were going to play in this game or were going to play in this game because we would have used that game before a guy that we just haven't had a chance to ask about that i, I think got banged up during the the big 12 championship was is uso how was how is he yeah, done? Uso has not practiced yet, um, but all indications are that he'll be full go uh, next Monday when we get to New Orleans. Coach, when you were in Texas, did you have much of a chance to visit with Darren Sproles? Uh, just said hello to him before the game, but that was it. How much of an inspiration do you feel he is to guys like Deuce and others of that physical stature? Oh, I'm sure he is. Uh, I know that you know he's one of the greatest players in in college football history w with him being in the Hall of Fame, let alone the NFL, uh, absolutely. I know that guys like Deuce look up to him. Uh, anybody that's a running back that's not of the prototypical stature would look up to Darren Sproles because the guy was a dude, man. He was a great player. And um, I'm just happy that he was on the sideline uh, and a part of, of that game and experience. He's been uh, to practices of ours. Uh, I welcome all of our former players back, and uh, I was excited that uh, Darren was a part of that uh, a couple a couple Saturdays ago. When you're uh, recruiting, uh, I mean, you can't measure heart, but when you're looking at physical stature, what are the factors you look into to convince you that they could play on this level? Um, well, you look at a kid like Deuce Vaughn, you turn the video on, uh, and you're like, We'll take that kid. That kid's pretty special. And then you bring him up because you want to make sure that the character and the integrity match the ability. And uh, they exceeded the ability in my mind. And he and his mother came up when he came on his his visit. And all he wanted was a chance. That's all he wanted was a chance because I don't think anybody else in Power 5 was giving him a chance. Um, and when you flipped on his tape, 
you knew he was good enough to play, no matter what size he was. But then when he sat in my office and you saw the same infectious smile that you guys see every day and a kid of character and integrity and, and a family with character and integrity, it was like, we're not letting this kid go, and we're going to we're gonna jump on him and, and see if he'll take it, and he did. Um, and I think some people probably regret that. One final one from me. Uh, there's been a lot of national recognition of Deuce in the last week or so. Can you share your thoughts on reaction uh, to that? I, I will say the same thing that Deuce would say. Um, we've got an unbelievable offensive line that has worked its tail off, uh, that uh, have opened up a lot of holes. Uh, and we've got great tight ends, fullbacks, wide receivers at block. Collins done a great job of calling plays and deuce with the football uh, that he wouldn't say is as electric as anybody I've ever been around. You guys who will have to you know, decide if they want to maybe go to the NFL after this season or not, how do you as a coach plan on handling those conversations with guys and advising them? We'll, the we'll, we'll talk about it after the bowl game and, and – um, we're already, they are already gathering that information. And I'm going to help these guys make the best choices for, for them and their families. Um, everybody would like to see these guys in, in K-State purple again next year. We, we know that. But um, what's the best thing for them and their family and for their future? That's the thing that, uh, um, you know, I've been doing this, doing this a while and you get to know these kids so well that you don't want to lose them, you don't want them to leave, uh, but you also know that there's an opportunity, and sometimes those windows are small for them to go on and, and have that chance to play at the next level and take care of their family. Um, and uh, if, if that's the best pattern or best, best path for them, um, we're sure going to support them in whatever they do. One last one follow-up on, on Adrian. Given that he's never played in a bowl game before, how much is he itching to get out there, even if it's just in some small way? Well, even after he got hurt against um, against Baylor, and we knew he was going to be out for uh, some period of time, he and I talked, just he and I in the office, and I just said, Adrian, I, I know how important it is for you to be ready to play in a bowl game. And I said, I, I want to make sure that you are going to push yourself to get to that bowl game not knowing what his plan was going to be. And that was what he had kind of earmarked of, no, Coach, I, I, I want to play in a bowl game. I never had, had the opportunity, very similar to Cade last year, uh, of Cade wanting that opportunity to play in a bowl game. And so I was so excited that Adrian, for starters, said, no, Coach, that, that is my goal is to get myself ready uh, for, for the bowl game. If we played tomorrow, I don't know if he would be ready to play. But I know we still have, you know, a good amount of time. And the fact that he is practicing, I hope, gives him confidence and gets him stronger so that he's ready. Because he has some other things on the other side of this bowl game, too. I want to make sure he's healthy enough to do some of those other things, whether it's uh, combines to different, you know, you know, all-star game, bowl, bowl game experiences uh, that he can showcase his skills for the next level. You've got signing period opening on Wednesday. And you've got the transfer portal coming and going. Yep. You've got possible guys leaving for the NFL after the bowl game, but you also have the COVID season. Yep. Guys might come back. How do you manage the 85 scholarships? You don't. I mean, it's it's a headache, me listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Fitz, you give me a headache typically, but that one really got me. Um, you know, the bad thing is I got to talk to Taylor Brad about that all the time, and he's scatterbrained as it is. Mm -hmm. So the roster management – um, is very difficult. That's all I can say. It's very difficult. And, you know, are you going to undersign and then you got to find guys late? Or are you going to oversign and, and assume somebody's going to leave the program? Uh, are you going to sign somebody and then not realize that kid's coming back? Or not sign somebody and two guys in that position leave? Uh, I think we're still in another two year cycle of this, uh, which is, is crazy. Um, it's, I don't know, it's the roster management is incredibly hard right now for all all head coaches and I see it more with new head coaches going into places because that's where there's probably even more mass exodus when you get a new coach and all these man I, I don't know it's you know, to, to recruit 40 50 guys on some on some rosters probably um, you know we've had a handful leave you guys know we've had a handful leave um, I know there'll probably be a couple more, 
but I don't think there'll be 15 more or something so that we, once again, we feel like we have a handle on it, um, but something's always going to happen or could happen. And so um, we're talking about it on a daily basis, and I'm praying that I can get to was the 21st is now the 22nd on a signing day press conference and and then be able to shut it down afternoon of the 22nd 23rd 24th 25th and try to catch my own breath before we reconvene and and roll through December 26th till February 1st the early signing period had noble intentions but is it in the right place on the calendar um Probably not. I just don't know because there's always unintended consequences when you move something. Probably not. Um, but if somebody said, why don't you do this on August 1st and sign all these young kids on August 1st? Well, we get a lot of kids that are 2023s because they came to a home football game this September or this October and went, wow, what an electric place this is. I want to come here. I don't want to lose that either. Um, you know, we get kids that commit in the summer like everybody else does. Uh, but we still get those kids that, that say, I want to come to a game in the fall. In our game day environment, I'll put up against anybody because it's, it's phenomenal. And you can see that this is an electric campus, an electric town and community on game day. Mm -hmm. And so I, be, I would be hesitant to say how much earlier you're going to have it because you still got to utilize those game visits. I'm not answering it if you do. <laughs> he took mine. <laughs> Yeah, but if you push it back to March 1st, then nobody's going to early enroll in January. That, that I mean, there's so many different things that we could continue this on for hours upon hours. Um, I just don't know where it's going. I, I really don't. Um, I don't make those decisions. I just got to try to take whatever rule it is and, and make it work. And that's, that's what all of us are trying to do. Um, but, uh, you know, there's kids entering the transfer portal right now, and, and it just became dead yesterday. So now those guys are trying to find places to go, and they can't go on those campuses. And, and we as coaches are trying to do that, but trying to secure our high school class, uh, trying to get ready for a bowl game. I'm glad we didn't play last weekend in the bowl game because some of those coaches coached last weekend in the bowl game and lost all that week of recruiting. Um, so um, I, I don't know where it's going. I just don't have any idea. Coach Cooper Beebe's one of those players with a decision to make. So how vital of a cog has he been along the he, offensive he's line? He's been phenomenal. Uh, another All-American that uh, deserved uh, the recognition. Uh, and um, you know, he's that, that offensive line together has so much continuity, so much chemistry together. Uh, it's been fun to watch. And the one thing I'd say about that group, as, much, as many snaps as those guys have played together, they keep getting better and better this year. All right, appreciate it. OK. Yeah, we'll see you Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>